In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Start off by reading Romans chapter 15, verses 1 to 7, and then Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 35. Now, in Romans chapter 15, verse uh, 4, St. Paul is talking about the Old Testament, of course, what we call the Old Testament. He says this, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. Now, if we're going to have that patience and comfort given to us, that comfort we mean strength, of course. Uh, the word is comfort. It means you have a fort, and the comforter was the fort that was put next to it to strengthen the original fort. Fort meaning strong, come next to, so next to the thing that's strong, something to make you even stronger. So to gain that, that, that strength from the scriptures, we have to do something that I find many people are reluctant to do. It's a very simple, straightforward thing, and that is we have to read the scriptures. Now, that might sound not very shocking, but I guess that if you were to take a, an honesty poll of people in church, very few of them will have touched their Bibles in the previous week or month, and sadly, even the last year. I can remember some years ago somebody saying to me that he didn't need to read his Bible because he'd read it all as a child and he didn't need to read it again. And that was really to miss the point of what the scriptures really are. They're one of the ways that God speaks to us. He talks to us through the experiences of previous generations of Christians in the New Testament and in the writings of the Church Fathers and in the lives of the saints and in the experiences of other fellow Christians around us. God speaks to us through them. But he also speaks to us through all of the whole of the scriptures, all of the Bible. And therefore it's really well worthwhile taking your copy and thinking about a methodical way of reading through it. Obviously, there are some things that all of us ought to be doing anyway. For example, reading the scriptures that are set for each day by the church. You get one of those little books, you look it up, along with the saints and whether or not you're fasting, and they're the readings for that day. You take those and you read them, and you allow God to speak to you through those. But then also, it's, it really is not brilliant stuff, this. It's important to read the whole of the Bible, all of it. And what I think is a useful thing to do is set your alarm clock or on your um, mobile phone or cell phone or whatever it might be, and take the alarm, set it for, say, five minutes. Or let's be mean. Let's set it for four minutes. And you spend four minutes reading the Old Testament. And then you might set it again for another four minutes and spend four minutes reading the New Testament. Altogether, that's going to take ten minutes out of your entire day each day. You do that, you'll be astounded how fast you begin to read through the whole of the Old Testament and New Testament in just ten minutes every day. Or you might choose to do something a bit different. Say, read one chapter of the New Testament, or one chapter of the Gospels every day, one chapter of the rest of the New Testament, and maybe two chapters of the Old Testament each day. That won't take you long, probably no more than 12 minutes each day, to read it carefully. Or you might like to do something much better, get hold of a commentary, or even look online on the internet. And there are quite a number of good places to look nowadays. And find a proper orthodox commentary on the scriptures or what St. John Chrysostom has written. There are quite a number of books now you can find, and work through the commentary on the Scriptures. Reading the Scripture, looking to see what other people have said about it in the past. 
or it could be an academic commentary where you read the scriptures and you see the academic commentary on the passage that you're reading. Look carefully and you'll begin to see that lots of parts of the scriptures are tied up together. So you get, um, um, they're called types. You might have a story in the New Testament, but you have a type of it, a sort of pretaste, a foretaste in the Old Testament of this story in the New. You have an idea that is presented to humanity in the Old Testament and then this comes through into the life of Christ. And the one helps us to understand the other one. It's also very important that when you are looking for patience and strength, comfort from the Old Testament, from the Scriptures, that you read it with our Lord and God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, in mind. And you read it with the idea that this has been inspired by the Holy Spirit. It might be inspired in a very muddled way, and sometimes you'll see that things contradict each other. But try and dig underneath that, and all the time say to yourself, what is it that God is trying to teach humanity at that time? And therefore, what is it that God is trying to teach me now, and our fellow brothers and sisters in the world now? in the same way. And you'll find many startling things. Lots of things you thought were there are not there, and lots of things that you didn't know were there, you'll discover are there. <laughs> but the other thing that'll happen is this, that as you read, you'll discover that each day God begins to speak to you through the scriptures. You might say, what on earth has that got to do with my life today. And then you go off to work or college or school or you sit at home watching the telly and something about those scriptures gradually, gradually will become relevant to what is happening in front of you then. You see how important it is to read the scriptures. St Paul says, whatever things were written before were written for our learning. They weren't just written for fun, or because they're pleasant bedtime stories, or something to get up to, or a discipline that you follow. They're written for our learning, that we may know God, as St. Paul says in another place. In understanding, be adults. Sometimes it's, uh, say, in understanding, be men. What he's saying is that, Children are fed milk and porridge and bread and so on when they're little. But as you grow older, so you need meat. And as you become older in the Christian faith, so you need the meat that comes from studying the scriptures, studying the church fathers, studying the lives of the saints, studying those around you who are filled with the Holy Spirit and coming to see what it is that God is saying to you and how therefore you can respond to the invitation of God to be his servant. God bless you. Pray for me. Amen.